from the 20. Inside and dragged down after a five-yard return by Jovan Burns. Brett Gordon has been valiant, but it all comes down to this. 2.53 remaining. They need a touchdown. America is cheering the Junction Boys. Behringer's performance is undeniably forceful. Let's out done! His steeliest glare since Platoon. I will not lose! Vividly portrayed, a rarity. An emotional, raw-boned hunk of a movie. You damn near killed my friend! He ain't quitting. ESPN scores. Now we ain't never gonna quit working. The Junction Boys. Tonight at 9 p.m. on ESPN. Tonight, three cool reasons to keep it on Comcast Digital Cable. At 8, it's the best of history on Discovery Civilization. At 9, see Tyrese Gibson and Snoop Dogg in Baby Boy on More Max. And at 10, catch Laura Croft, Tomb Raider on Showtime Beyond. It's all cool all night on Comcast Digital Cable. If you don't have it, get it at 1-888-900-2424. This holiday at your Yamaha dealer, every motorcycle and every ATV can be yours for 0% financing with zero down and zero payments. Plus, get up to $300 in holiday cash on select models. So this holiday, give them what they really want. Back at McNeese Stakes, 2.53 remaining. The winner of this game goes on to Chattanooga to play Western Kentucky, who advanced today against Georgia Southern. That game will take place Friday, 6.30 Eastern time on ESPN2. And what a tremendous game we've had, Rod. Oh, we have. And Brett Gordon and his Villanova teammates have played the role of Cinderella. And that slipper is a little bit tight, a little bit uncomfortable, but it has not been thrown away yet. Four wide receivers. Villanova has one timeout remaining. The dump off tipped again over the middle. Intended for number 36, Chap Chapin. B.J. McNutt batted it down. Well, not much has changed. Crossing routes. We've seen them all day long. McNeese State doing a much better job of knocking the receivers off when they run the crossing routes. There you see the linebackers dropping into coverage, looking for the crossing routes. And that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage by B.J. McNutt. But Roderick Royal and Ryan Garrison, linebackers, sitting in there looking for the crossing routes and will take their shots. And that's a big one by Broderick, Roderick Royal. Takes a vicious hit there. They're intending to chap it on the field right now. Just to remind you, you joined us, Brett Gordon, the Villanova quarterback, one of the three finalists for the Walter Payton Award, playing with a fractured thumb on his right hand. He's been busy today, 45 pass attempts despite that rod, and he's been sacked six times. Now remember, he could not hold a fork last night because it was too painful. They shot him up today so he could play, and he's thrown a couple touchdown passes that a little bit of a lack of control of the ball at times, but has played just fantastic. Second and ten. Got man coverage at the top of the screen. The crossing route to Brian White. Down the left sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line by free safety Rod Gully. 30 yards on the play, but we do have a flag. And it's coming back. The officials still huddling about this call as Andy Talley looks on. Pass interference on the offense. Talley's assessed half the distance to the goal line. 
deep second down. Well, you know, the crossing routes pick plays. They run pick plays, and they flag them for it this time. But you know, Mark, they've been running those plays all game long. Yeah. This is nothing new. They run it to perfection that time. White coming out the back door. Wide open. All right. Over here. There's your pick coming, and they rub them off right there. Did you see that? The difference of 43 yards. It was a 30-yard advance on the play. Minus 13 on the penalty. Gordon to Chapman. Breaks the tackle. And banged out of bounds at the 23-yard line by Garrison. Well, they got him for the pick play that play before, you know, brought him back. When you rub off a defender like that, but they didn't get the late hit on Gordon. Gordon got blasted a couple plays ago. He's taken a tremendous beating. Whether they can get this third down in about 14, I think it's, it's sort of irrelevant. They're going to go for them fourth down if they have to. This is a two-down situation. Four wide. The blitz. Chapman can't hold on. Uh, the pressure made him get rid of it. A half beat early. Chapman didn't have his head turned around. The ball came a little bit too fast. Uh, with fourth and 12 now, Andy Talley says, let's call our last time out and let's talk about this. Uh, I think they're very likely to see crossing routes again and almost challenge the officials, you know, to call another pick play. And they, I think they'll run it again. And Andy Talley is furious. They're going to talk it over. We're back with the conclusion of this semifinal after this. Dublin, Ohio, a town divided between Wendy's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger and Wendy's Chicken Bacon Swiss. People, there's common ground here. Bert and, and Cindy, don't you both love Swiss? Yes. Of course you do. And who here doesn't enjoy hickory smoked bacon? Some like it on a whole breast filet and some on a cheeseburger. But are we going to let that tear us apart? Yes. Choose Wendy's Bacon Swiss Cheeseburger or Chicken Bacon Swiss. It's better here. The Braun Synchro is the world's first shaver with a four-way moving head, so it catches more hair in fewer strokes for a closer shave. Only it moves so fast, you can't see it, but you can hear it. And to keep it feeling like new every day, its automatic self-cleaning system thoroughly cleans the shaver in alcohol, leaving nothing to come between the shaver and your face. Braun, designed to make a difference. The 1AA semifinal game, McNeese State trail 21-7. It's been an all-Cowboys second half. But Brett Gordon and Villanova still have a chance. Fourth and 12. Overthrow. With no timeouts left. That ought to thin the Cowboys to Chattanooga against Western Kentucky. Tally still cannot believe the earlier call of the pick play or offensive pass interference after a 30 yard gain that would have put the Wildcats in business. Well, he has a legitimate beef. They've been running the crossing routes all game long, rubbing guys off, and it wasn't called until the last two minutes of the ball game. Prim for about three yards. Coming up after this semifinal game between McNeese State and Villanova, it's College Hoops. Missouri at Memphis. Hey, we've got our own little bit of uh, large madness here. Fantastic finish, great comeback, McNeese State in the second half of this ball game. Outstanding performance by B.J. Sams, their wide receiver. Flea Martin, Trahan, the senior tailback, Ben Darvis, the quarterback, overcome. 
overcame another shaky start. And he'll now go to 13-2 as a starter here for the Cowboys. But what a tremendous performance by Brett Gordon. I don't think I've seen a more courageous performance in college football. A guy who was playing with a broken thumb had to shoot it up so he could play and to, to play as well as he did, just fantastic. A third generation quarterback for Villanova. His father played there. His grandfather played for Villanova. And he left it all on the field today. Prim. Down to the 12 yard line. You can see the emotion in that young man's face. Not much more he could have done. No. A true warrior who inspired his football team, but he and the Wildcats will not be going to Chattanooga. Unless something really freaky happens, McNeese State, the number one ranked team in Division 1AA, will be heading to Chattanooga on Friday to take on Western Kentucky for the national championship. And it hurts so much when you get down to this point in the season when you have that one shot. You're so close. A couple of plays here and there. But it's so great for a McNeese State. They haven't been to a championship game since 97 when they lost to Youngstown State 10 to 9. And they got a chance to get back. That's what makes this game so great, Rod. Oh, the, the emotion of it is it's, just yeah. chilling. Just chilling. And we have to say congratulations to Tommy Tate. I mean, this man was an assistant here at McNeese for 20 years. And he's led his football team now as a head coach to three consecutive postseason appearances in his three years as the head coach. Well, he, he's paid his dues. They had uh, graduation this morning. Yes. A couple of players graduated from McNeese State and then came out on the field and they'll win a championship, a chance to go play for a national championship in the afternoon. That's a pretty good Saturday if you're a graduating senior at McNeese State. Yeah, Hadley Prince, the uh, conference player of the year, and fullback Darren Ostelek were the two gentlemen that uh, graduated earlier this morning, 10 o'clock local time. You take a look, we sent some cameras over there, and Hadley there is uh, going on to become a veterinarian go on to uh, vet school and hopefully at uh, LSU is where he wants to go and after that ceremony they took a few pictures and then hustled on over here to put their their football stuff on so that they could play in this game I mean an academic all-american here this is I mean vet school and pre-vet is not you know there's not a lot of easy courses there no not at all I tell you we had a chance to visit with him yesterday and what an outstanding young man oh. whichever whichever school gets him for graduate school is going to be very very happy about that a three-time high school state champion rodeo rider. Saddle Bronc and Bear Brown. Tough kid. I've never done that stuff. No. I wouldn't want to, I don't think. <laughs> they don't have that Motion City, New Jersey, buddy. <laughs> Trim breaks the tackle and ices it for the Cowboys. The fifth touchdown for McNeese State in the second half. They've been dominant. After only 132 yards in the first half, Rod, they put 280 yards up here in the second frame. Yeah, the, the last one's a gimme, though. I, you know, you can take a knee and uh, have your celebration and go to Chattanooga. Celebration. We should also mention that seven of the eight coaches here at McNeese State played here for the Cowboys. 
And as great as it is, as it is for McNeese State, that's how low this is going over. Marino uh, misses the extra point, but it's really of no consequence. As the Cowboys send their conference player of the year, Hadley Prince, enjoy a shot at a national championship next Friday in Chattanooga. For tough jobs around the house, reach for the tool set more mechanics come home to. Gear Ratchet. Gear Ratchet, the world's most flexible ratchet set, delivers the added speed, torque, and strength of a professional set. Gear Ratchet's innovative through-hole socket design makes reaching nuts on long bolts easy. Even worn, rusty fasteners are no match for Gear Force technology. And Gear Ratchet works with any quarter-inch or three-eighths inch drive socket. Plus, the dual-position extension lets you reel in those hard-to-reach fasteners. Gear Ratchet, the world's most flexible ratchet set, is available through this special television offer in the complete 71-piece set for only $49.99 or this handy 21-piece version for just $29.99. Get one for the house and car and one for the boat. Call 1-800-762-3048, go online, or stop by any participating Sears store. Gear Ratchet, get it done fast, get it done right the first time. Call now. McNeese State, an 11-point winner at this point over a very valiant Villanova team. As they play this one out. Outlaw spins out of one tackle and upended at the 35-yard line. Six seconds remain in the ballgame. In 1954, Paul Bear Bryant took 115 football players into the drought-ridden desert of Junction, Texas. Only 35 would survive to play for him. ESPN Original Entertainment presents The Junction Boys tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN. Immediately following the Heisman Trophy presentation at 8. For more information, you can log on to ESPN.com. Keyword, Junction. I tell you, that was a great book. It was a oh, riveting a book. Tremendous book. Oh. Gordon to White. Hook and ladder. Gibson to the 40. And that's it. Time expires. Tommy Tate and the McNeese Cowboys are headed to Chattanooga. That's going to do it from Lake Charles, Louisiana, where our final score is McNeese State 39, Villanova 28. For Rod Gilmore, Stacey Pace, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Mark Ballone. College basketball is next. Number 10, Missouri at Memphis. Handling the call, our man Ron Franklin. And congratulations to McNeese, Rob Franklin, along with John Sundold, jam-packed Hearns Field House here in Columbia, Missouri. And I'll tell you, this Missouri Tiger team has been on fire. That makes it 24 to 7 as they came out, John, at a 15 to 0 burst. And the man who led the way was Ricky Paulding, who got a quick nine points, six quick ones from Bryant. Well, quickly, Missouri made eight of their first 12 field goals. Memphis, on the other hand, two of their first eight, and they had six turnovers early. Missouri converted those turnovers on the other end. A good look at Ricky Pauling now on the sideline. Nine quick points, couple dunks. He really was special, but this Missouri team is really off to a hot start. You know, John Calipari extremely disappointed with uh, with his ball club. As you look at the game tracks here, field goals, 3 of 13 Memphis, 10 of 21 for Missouri. And look at the turnovers, 7. Eight quick points came off turnovers, and the first time that Memphis scored was at the 16-13 mark. And, John, you made the comment at the time tough enough to do that even if you're at home you can't do it on the road because that's suicide well you're going on the road against uh, the 10th ranked team in the country you've got to take care of the basketball get quality shots John Cal Calipari's ball club has done neither the shots they've taken have not been in sync they've thrown the basketball away now what they have to do in the last 10 57 of this half slowly get back into this ball game and get some momentum going into halftime so there's a timeout, and we will take it with them. 10.57 remaining until halftime. 24 to 9, Missouri. 
come at my mother's for dinner. She says, wasn't that chilly unbelievable? I say, unbelievable. Where's the Alka-Seltzer? Only Alka-Seltzer's effervescent power relieves indigestion and pain fast. Get better relief. Get Alka-Seltzer. The Maglite flashlight. We could go on and on why Maglite is one of the world's most durable flashlights. Or we could just hit it with a Mag truck. Intelligence is not limited to humans. <laughs> Proof! Make a collect call, Mr. Frisky! <laughs> Witness him dialing down the center at 1-800-C-A-L-L-A-T-T. -T. Even he knows it's free for you and cheap for them. Come on. Huh? <laughs> Monkey always gets the girl. Save on every call. Dial 1-800-CALL-ATT for collect calls. Hope you're happy. The Braun Synchro is the world's first shaver with a four-way moving head, so it catches more hair in fewer strokes for a closer shave. Only it moves so fast, you can't see it, but you can hear it. And to keep it feeling like new every day, its automatic self-cleaning system thoroughly cleans the shaver in alcohol, leaving nothing to come between the shaver and your face. Braun, designed to make a difference. It's a three-act play. Act one, introduce characters. Act two, develop obstacles. Act three, resolution. Twenty-four to nine, Missouri enjoying a, a big lead. Fifteen to nothing, John. They jumped on top, and to me, a couple of things that happened. For starters, Trayvon Bryant has been a starter. Yeah. He didn't start in this game tonight. Young Jeffrey Ferguson did. I think the head coach was trying to send him a message. A little bit of a refocal point on the defensive end and rebounding for Trayvon Bryant. Missouri came out in a fast pace, a fever pitch. The crowd was crazy. One thing that happened again, Memphis got caught up, turned the ball over the first three possessions, layups for Missouri. Missouri got easy looks every possession they get. Now what you got to guard against if you're Quinn Snyder and this crowd in the Hearn Center is their complacency now. Yes. It wasn't too easy, too fast. And if you're Memphis, hey, settle down on the defensive end. Get a couple stops. Get some fast break points. Get better looks on the offensive end. Get back into this game by halftime. McKinney in the ball game. There is a turnover by the Missouri Tigers as we come back. Good and hands. This is defensively. Burks, who has been bothered by a hamstring, playing. He started the ball game and has gone almost the entire distance here as we have ten and a half minutes left until halftime, and that's going to be Clemens with the foul. Now let's identify a couple of people who are new faces to both of these ball clubs. Clemens, who just committed the foul, he's a junior, transferred out of the College of Southern Idaho, and John, he's got some big shoes to fill because he's the point man. Well, you think of uh, Missouri a year ago, and the point production came from Clarence Gilbert and Cream Rush. Well, Ricky Clemens comes in, averaged nearly 20 points a game in junior college. He's a 5'11", 175 point guard, but his strength is shooting the basketball. He can run the club. He has been solid so far this season. He, he brings up some of the production that lost from Gilbert and Rush. When you think about Memphis, you start saying, well, wait a second. Wagner last year, Wise, McFadden is gone. He's transferred. Who picks up the production there? And they've been searching. Burks now healthy. Carney, the freshman, has been outstanding early in this season. Rice has been good. We know Rice is a solid shooter. Everyone has to become involved for Memphis, especially this afternoon. Big Arthur Johnson puts up the jump hook. Not there. Trayvon Bryant that has blocked. it blocked. That was Richmond who got up. Richmond, by the way, playing his first ball game for Memphis. He's a transfer from Vanderbilt and just became eligible the day before yesterday. He tries to run it down and uh, can't get it. Actually, that's uh, number 15. That is Chiero, who was out of West Africa. Uh, you mentioned Billy Richmond, the uh, sophomore of Vanderbilt, started 18 of the 30 ball games. He is from Memphis, Hamilton High School. Nice player. Very solid moves at Vanderbilt. Had some big ball games there, and they expect some big things in a Memphis Tiger uniform. Really good athlete, but obviously a little rusty since he has not been able to play. Paulding's been a tough matchup early for this Memphis ball club. Paulding off the mark. Over the back, it's going to be Bryant, and that's his second foul. Now here is what has happened. Missouri, just what John was talking about, and a really good observation. 
they are two of their last 12 field goals and the crowd all of a sudden kind of sitting on their hand because we were rocking and rolling the first seven eight minutes of this ball game and, and I think the quality of shots has decreased a little bit Memphis has said okay we're not going to give you the easy looks we did that the first five minutes it's not very beneficial for John Calipari's squad